let's motivate the quantum harmonic oscillator. So in general, a particle will experience a fairly complex looking potential. And parts of that potential you can model uh, as a square well, which we've already studied. And then other parts of that potential that particle will experience, you could model uh, very close to the well as a potential that goes like, say, x squared. And so we would say near the bottom of that well, the potential looks something like x squared, let's say 1 half kx squared in particular. Well, that's kind of nice because in classical physics, we say that the force is minus the derivative of the potential with respect to x, which would be minus kx in this case. But that's just the force of a spring force. That's why we call this the harmonic oscillator because it is an oscillator like a spring. It has an oscillation frequency of the square root of k over m, where m is the mass of a particle. And so we typically rewrite this as k is equal to m omega squared, so the potential is 1 half m omega squared x squared. Just getting rid of this idea of a spring force, uh, or the spring constant, and just talking about the frequency. So then let's look at the quantum harmonic oscillator. For the quantum harmonic oscillator, we write down Schrodinger's equation for the potential that we have. So we have minus h bar squared over 2m, the second derivative of psi with respect to x squared, plus 1 half m omega squared x squared psi, that's v times psi, and that's all equal to e times psi. So we want to solve this ordinary differential equation for the wave functions psi sub n, and then the allowed energies e sub n, just as we saw for the infinite square well. We do have boundary conditions in this case for the x squared potential. Namely, we want the wave function psi to go to zero as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Uh, if we didn't impose these types of boundary conditions, uh, we can't normalize the wave function, so we want the wave function to vanish at infinity. But other than that, we don't need to say it's zero at any particular point. We just say it's zero as x goes to infinity. Okay, before we solve this ordinary differential equation, we might do well to spend a little bit of time thinking about what solutions will actually look like before we solve for them. So let's remind ourselves what the square well looked like. So when we have a square well potential, Wave function solutions, uh, well, the ground state looks something like this. And then the first excited state has an oscillation like this, so it would look something like this. Recall that the energies of the square well go something like n squared as you increase in n. For the harmonic oscillator, our potential looks something like x squared. And if we draw our wave functions, the ground state wave function should look similar, should have a bump in the middle, and then it should vanish at infinity. So this is what we expect our ground state will look like. Again, we want that to taper off sufficiently fast. The first excited state will have a wiggle in the middle, just like the first excited state of the square well. And so we expect that the first excited state will look something like this. How do the energy levels depend on n? Well, it's not particularly clear at the moment, and we're going to have to solve for that. OK, so let's get into the business of solving it. And we're going to break this up into two videos, the solving of it. So let's rewrite the Schrodinger's equation that we had above for the quantum harmonic oscillator. OK, so let's see what solutions are. Well, solutions are pretty nasty. Uh, we can make this nicer if we define some dimensionless variables, because there's a lot of noise going on here with the h bars and the m's and the omegas. So let's call c uh, as the square root of m omega over h bar times x. So d c is the square root of all that business times dx. So what that means is whenever you have a derivative of psi or the second derivative of psi, you can turn that into a derivative, or rather a second derivative, uh, with respect to c. Uh, with a uh, factor of m omega over h bar. It's also useful to define a dimensionless energy, which will come up. So we're going to call k the combination 2e over h bar omega. And we'll see why that's necessary or useful in a minute. 
So again, we'll rewrite our Schrodinger's wave function, but now in terms of xi instead of x. So we turn that second derivative into a second derivative with respect to xi. We turn the x squared into xi squared. And then the right, we still have just e times psi. Multiplying constants through, I can simplify this a lot. So I have the second derivative of psi with respect to c squared, minus c squared psi is equal to k of psi. Or I can rewrite this a little bit nicer. Um, the second derivative with respect to psi, c squared, excuse me, is equal to c squared minus k all times psi. So in the next video, we're going to solve this in a bit more detail and see what the solutions look like.